brothers and sisters, you know, I, 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 I try my best to make sure that I'm, I'm really tuning into God and, and the blessings that he's already bestowed upon us. And I also try to make sure that, that as we begin to listen to the most of, of God is saying to us in a spiritual, from a spiritual perspective, that, that in this year, that we begin to tune in more into God's spiritual word. Allowing it to be part of our everyday life. The challenge that, that we find, and, and God led me to into the book of uh, Ezekiel, about a challenge he incurred with his nation of Israel. You see, in a transitional type of situation, Israel, which is a spiritual name that God gave Jacob and the descendants because of his father Abraham, was moving it from the flesh to the spiritual side of life. And he was creating a spiritual nation. But the challenge is that spiritual nation didn't always do what God wanted to do. And he started out in the Old Testament, and he got very frustrated as he began to speak to the prophet Ezekiel. And he began to really acknowledge how he felt towards those who were supposed to be called by his name. The challenge, believers and brothers and sisters right now, is that this nation, this world has gone through that same type of transition as we saw in Ezekiel. And God shut us down. He shut the world down through what we call these pandemics. But it's a period of time for us to be restored back unto the greatness that God wants us to have as a nation. And I'm talking about as a nation of believers unto himself. With that, I want to just bring an excerpt just to kind of see what occurred back in Ezekiel. Turn to Ezekiel 37th chapter. The 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel. Beginning the first verse. I want to take you with a different paradigm here. If you if you just bear with me on this right here. From a from a theological standpoint. You know, we you know when you uh, uh, study the the things of God from a theological standpoint, uh, uh, and theology, which is my area of discipline, you also realize that it has to be confined with the divinity part, which is to study the spiritual aspect of it too. But, but you have to understand both. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit from that combination standpoint. But, but God considered that, that even from man's standpoint, he did not understand God's thoughts or his ways. And we've been talking about that for the last two to three weeks here. But let's, let's go to Ezekiel 37th chapter. And this is God talking to Ezekiel, trying to restore and just acknowledging what he saw and what he felt. First verse, the hand of the Lord was upon me, this is Ezekiel talking, and carried me out into the spirit of the Lord. And he sent me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Just a bunch of bones just laying out there. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest, Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I want you to put yourself prior to, there are a lot of things as believers, we were not fulfilling the thing. We were not bringing the life that God wanted us to have in our lives right now. God said, Jesus said he came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. But we were sitting there complaining. We were sitting there praying over and over for things that God has already given us through his word, but the challenge is believers, we really didn't know how to possess stuff, and we still don't know how to receive things that God has already said. He said he said his word to heal and to deliver. Let me just go on. Thus said the Lord, verse 5, Thus said the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath mm, to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, this is Ezekiel responding, as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, 
there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, the word says, bone to his bone. These bones were scattered out, but each bone began to get to the part that it was naturally supposed to fit together with. The same thing that God created you, being the part of, he, he made it allow the part that you allowed to scatter, you allowed to become dry, to come back, to form the person that God wanted you to become. He said, verse 8, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. Sometimes we will allow it to feed. Sometimes we will allow ourselves to become dead to the word based on the tragedies and the situation that's around us. Sometimes through unbelief. Sometimes through disappointments in life. Sometimes through tragedies in life. Sometimes through hurt in life. We have become dead. We've allowed ourselves, even though we're believers, to become dead to the word because we're too busy focusing on what's happening to our flesh and not realize that that's not who we really are. We're spirit that have mind or soul that live in this body. We allow the flesh to take over and to do things that the spirit is supposed to be in command of. Oh, my Lord. But God came to give us life. He's talking about his spirit right now. He said, again, verse 9, Then said he unto, the, unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Oh, are you a part of that army today, brothers and sisters? It says, Then said he unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, the spiritual house we're talking about here. These bones are the whole house of Israel. Verse 11, Behold, they say, our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. That's spiritual land. See, we're dead when we're not tuning in. My sheep know my voice. That's spiritual language we're talking about. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. We're talking about that scripture that says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He says here, verse 12, They are prophesying, saying to them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open up your grave and cause you to come up out of your grave and to bring you unto the land of Israel. That's spiritual land. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Verse 14, and shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, have spoken it, and perform it, saith the Lord. We can trust in God and allow God's spirit to guide and direct. We're alive. Everything we have is based on God's spirit directing. Jesus said before he departed this earth, he said, I will give you another comforter. And he should direct you into all truth. Not something that's true, but all truth. And we would have to understand that part. We confirm that this is what was occurring back there in the Old Testament here. But we saw the transition even in the New Testament. Turn to Acts quickly, please, because we're running out of time here. Acts quick. Acts 17 chapter of the book of Acts. And it's not, and it's not by chance that it called Acts. You know? These are the things that begin to occur after Jesus departure from the earth right here. And we have to understand that even in Revelation, it talks about this again, about the dry bone, about the graves. And just giving you from a different paradigm right now. That, that, that sometimes we were dead to our own self. We were dead to our sins. We didn't allow the knowledge of God, of understanding that God, he sent a word to get us back in right standing with him. 
His word was sent to heal and to deliver, to bring us back. But it's a spiritual word. It is a spiritual life. Even though you're in the world, you're not of the world. You move from the flesh to the spirit. But it's a part of you renewing that mind to understand who you really are. Not only who you are, but who you are. And that can only be done spiritually. The Bible tells us over in John that the true worshiper, the true worshiper of God, must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what the word tells us. All those dry bones that were laying down. All this pandemic has begun to wake us up. He began to show us who we are and who we are. He began to breathe life back into us. He began to put those bones that we scattered everywhere based on what the world was trying to tell us to come back. Scatter. you part of you over here. Part of you over there. Some of you over here. He said, no, let me put you back home. So you begin to serve me. You begin to be the creation I created you to be. Holy again. Not divided against yourself, not a divided within yourself, but hold back again so that my voice can begin to grow you into the person that I called you, that I anointed you to be. That's part of the challenge, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 17. Drop down to verse 24. It's a lot to this, but I'm just going to hit some excerpts right here because of the time here. Acts chapter 17, drop down to verse 24. The word reads, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with him. This is not about the buildings. You is what you God's temple. You. You are God's temple. Not that, that building, that mortar, that brick and mortar. He says, and repeat it again, and God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and have made of one blood all nations of men, for to dwell in all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed, and the bonds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Oh, God has always been there. God won't forsake you. We, walk, we had forsaken him. We had walked away from the spiritual things and the aspects of life that will bring Victory that will bring prosperity, that will bring love, understanding, that will bring forgiveness in our lives. He said this, and for in him, this is the part I want you to go understand here. Verse 3, 27 again, that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Verse 28, for in him, the scripture says, we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Let me repeat verse 20 one time again. For in him, that's God's spirit talking to us, we live and move and have our being. That's who we are based on who he made us. As we certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Brothers and sisters, we have the victory. We have the victory. Those dry bones, God has called and put me put back together. During this brief moment here, this time that we had paused, it was to gather us and gather ourselves. It was gather ourselves back to where we need to really be with him. The challenges of believers is that. We've got to begin to praise Him and worship Him. Not for what we want, but for what we already have. Oh, you know, your mind, your wills, and your emotion should line up with God's Word. But in order to do that, you have to study God's Word. The Bible says, study and show thyself to prove that a worker might be able to rightly divide the Word. God said in the latter days, He would send ministers, pastors after His own heart. 
to teach you the true gospel. That's the role I want to play. That's the role I want to be in. And sometimes the truth don't feel good. Sometimes the truth hurts, but it's the truth. But also that once you know the truth, the truth should make you free. Free from those things that have been turning you down. Free from those things that will get you sideways and turn about. Free from those things that have allowed you to, to go away from the truth that God has really designed for your life. Oh, I, I just pray God your soul, our soul, that we begin to hear his voice and know his voice and no longer follow the stranger. On this communion Sunday, I pray for all of our souls today. That we will allow the inner man begin to worship God the way he wants us to worship him. In spirit and in truth. Let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for another Sunday. We thank you, Father God, for realizing and understanding that we are yours, Father. That you are truly the author as well as the finisher of our faith. And through our faith, we can become whole again in you, Father. That these bones that you put together can be restored. That the breath of life that you breathe in us can, Father God, walk in abundance of your life. The one you've given us through Christ Jesus. Father, I ask that you touch the hearts, touch the lives of everyone under the sound of my voice right now, Father. That they hear you and not me, Father. That, Lord, that they really begin to realize that their heads are not tails. They're above only and not beneath. That any and all things in faith, when they put their hands upon it, shall prosper, Father. That they don't need to look back and put their hands to the plow, but press on, press on, press on to work the high calling that's in Christ Jesus. Oh, we may have been slain, Father God, by the world, but you remodel us, you bring us back up again, that we can stand tall, that we can be restored unto the place that you brought us into, Father. Lord, I thank you today. I praise you today. I speak victory today, Father, and I thank you, Father, for the hearers and the adherers of your word today, Father, that they shall walk in victory, they shall talk victoriously, and they shall live victoriously based on the truth that now resides in me. I thank you, I praise you, as I count these things done this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen.